Back on the Sportsmax so zone, still talking cricket. We're five days ahead of the first biosecure test match between the English team and the touring West Indians, both of them completing their intra-squad warm-up practice matches. And uh, we're going to be talking in a moment to David Brook, who is uh, there in England getting ready to cover the series for Sportsmax. And uh, as we said, England completing their match today. Ended in a draw with um, Ben Stokes's team chasing 255 for victory on the final day and ending on 157 for four and the match ending in a draw. Uh, Matt Parkinson two for 47, Johnny Bear still 39, the leading scorers for the Stokes team, but there Ben Stokes himself got 33 not out and there were some uh, reasonable scores there that uh, Tino Best mentioned uh, when he was assessing the England warm-up performances that a lot of their batsmen spent some time at the crease, which uh, wasn't the same with the West Indies in, in many instances. Yeah. Um, uh, David, Brook, he's live in England. Um, the venue, of course, for this biosecure test series. The entire cricket world, uh, David, is looking on to Southampton next week to see what will happen there because we have seen no international cricket since, since March. What's the mood there? And how are the Englishmen coming out of their final warm-up match today? Yes, uh, good, good, good night, Lance. Uh, I think the mood is one of great anticipation. Uh, as you say, um, this summer, this English cricket season has been devoid of any cricket uh, so far. The way that uh, everyone's been keenly observing these warm-up matches is the first cricket that anyone's seen that's been streamed uh, on, online. Um, is some indication of the pent-up demand. No one's been able to play recreational cricket either, although Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced today a U-turn or uh, a change to the, to the ban on recreational cricket. So village cricketers, club cricketers will be getting their whites out next, uh, next weekend uh, after this test match has started on Wednesday. Um, so, yeah, both camps, I think, um, I guess the warm-ups have, uh, have, have served their purpose up to a point. Um, maybe um, the uh, England boys might be um, a, little bit, a little bit happier with the performance of their batsmen. Yeah, we were making the point earlier on, um, David, that for the Englishmen, although Stokes' team didn't quite get to the 255 target today, which was a challenging target mm -hmm. given the, the number of time they had to play, but several batsmen got in, in, in their 30s. Um, yeah. Bearstow, Sibley, Crawley and um, Stokes unbeaten on 33. At least they spent some time at the crease. Yeah, exactly. And it was interesting to see um, uh, assistant coach Roddy Estwick's uh, comments uh, relating to the West Indies uh, top order. He said that he would have liked to have seen um, a little bit more uh, time spent by the, the West Indies top order. Uh, and of course, the runs um, with the uh, West Indies have announced or seem to be uh, sticking to their squad of uh, 14 plus uh, Shannon Gabriel. Whereas um, England, as far as I can see, have not uh, named a squad of uh, 15. They seem to be picking from uh, they seem to be picking from both uh, the, the full 25 players, as it were. Well, James Bracey today for England, he made an 85. He's only 23 years old, still, you know, trying to get a permanent test spot. What does this 85 do for him today? Well, I think, it, uh, is, I, I think it's a useful score for him. I don't think it's going to be enough to get um, him into the team because the opening batting uh, position, which he scored that from, is, is not available. Plus, um, there's enough wicketkeepers in this England side already yes. uh, in the squad because you've got um, Butler and Bairstow and Folks next in line on the wicketkeeper spot. But, you know, he's made a, a big statement there for the uh, for the selectors. I think that the vacant spot caused by um, Joe Root, uh, who's going to be with the, the birth of his second child, so he's going to be missing, as we know, and Stokes to be captain. That vacant spot, the word, the word seems to be that Dan Lawrence from uh, Essex yeah. Uh, could be making his debut there. And uh, so, you know, you've got uh, an inexperienced um, England uh, top order of uh, Sibley, Burns, Denley, and potentially Lawrence in that top four. Um, so there's something there for West Indies to bowl at, that's for sure. David, it's so funny that, you know, Roddy Eswick spoke about spending more time at the crease and then Joshua De Silva, the man who is not a part of the um, actual team itself, um, he spent six hours at the crease. He um, faced 248 balls and he was actually brilliant with the bat. As you say, it's, it, there's a slight irony there that, um, that West Indies are sticking to their policy of, you know, the, four, the squad of 14 yeah. um, plus reserves. Uh, with the exception of Shannon Gable, um, you know, that was well signposted that Shannon Gable 
would be allowed in, whereas Joshua De Silva, as you say, has made a, a, a big statement there. He spent a lot of time in the middle, hasn't been defeated. And you'd like to perhaps see a bit more flexibility. And, uh, you know, why not choose from the 25? That the West Indies have got the luxury of having uh, 25 players on this tour. Why not pick from the whole 25? Why restrict yourselves uh, to uh, the, the squad of 14? You know, and, and that's probably a, a question that, uh, you know, a lot of people might be asking at the moment. I don't know that the, there might be an, an answer maybe that they've had to restrict the squad numbers, but don't believe England are playing on that same uh, restriction. James Anderson, he picked up two wickets today. Based on how he bowled, do you think he'll cause any trouble for our batsmen? Well, Anderson, a, a fit James Anderson, Maria, is always going to cause problems for any uh, any batsman, particularly, you know, the weather, well, so far, uh, the weather's been pretty cloudy and unsettled. Um, though some would say it always is in, in Manchester. It might be better in Southampton uh, by the time we start on Wednesday. Any cloud cover is going to make James Anderson, Jimmy Anderson, a handful uh, for any side. Maybe Jimmy Anderson will be feeling um, a little bit apprehensive, though, because he's been having his share of injury problems, if you remember. Um, he was uh, ruled out of the South Africa tour and, and didn't make um, uh, only bowled a few overs in the ashes. So he'll be a little bit nervous when he comes in to bowl. But, yeah, he's going to ask questions of any opening, any top order. Yeah. Um, uh, David, you had a, a pretty lengthy interview on Thursday with uh, Dave Cameron, former Cricket West Indies president, who is eyeing the ICC's top spot. The ICC has issued a statement that with the interim um, man in charge, you know, Kwaja from Singapore, they are within the next week going through the process of um, deciding how the new um, chairman will be selected. Uh, we know the Englishman is one of the favorites for the job graves. But can you give us your take on the ICC chairmanship and if, in fact, do you think that Cameron has a shot or a real shot? Well, the, 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 you know, the, all the signs are um, that, uh, that, it, it's un, that, that he's unlikely to be nominated by uh, Cricket West Indies. That's what the, uh, the, sort of the, the sign seems to be. Um, you know, you have to say that um, uh, with Colin Grave, as you say, the the main candidate. You know, um, it, you might, you know, one might ask the question as to whether um, West Indies would be best served by having, um, you know, West Indian in that top job. Um, um, the especially as um, you know, Mr. Cameron's position seems to be consistent with um, what uh, cricket West Indies would be looking for in terms of getting a bigger share of cricket revenues for you know uh, outside the big three yeah. but i guess the big three um countries have got uh, of uh, india australia and england have got quite a hold uh, on the balance of power at the moment but uh, at a time when everyone's asking for fairer uh, competition and when johnny grave uh, the ceo of cricket west indies called for you know solidarity of the cricketing nations coming out of this pandemic and um, both he himself and uh, mr cameron both asked for a fairer competition, you know, so that you've got, um, uh, especially with a test uh, championship now, uh, where you've got, uh, should have teams playing uh, and with a more equitable distribution of resources. And uh, I, I wonder whether Colin Grave will, will make that um, his same, the same priority. I was now about to ask you, um, as you mentioned, Colin Grave, do you think he has, um, a ha like he's moving forward as opposed to Dave Cameron in this race, like he has an advantage? Um, he's certainly been talked about as, you know, as the favourite um, and um, that the chairmanship, you know, is, is likely to stay um, within the big three. Uh, the question is, can um, uh, Dave Cameron secure um, the uh, nominations um, in, in the time uh, available? Um, will Pakistan support him, for example? Uh, will uh, Surav Ganguly uh, throw his hat into the ring? Uh, representing the powerhouse of India, but that's the issue for for all the for the countries outside the big three, um, is how do you uh, establish a fair um, uh, competition when the majority of revenue is earned by uh, those three? It's interesting that the last time that there was a West Indian at the top table as president of the ICC was Sir Clyde Walcott the, the, of the three Ws, and when he stood down in 1998 as uh, chairman of, uh, of, of uh, ICC. That's when 
um, the, the, the formula for distributing revenues was changed the disadvantage of West Indies and some would say it's time for that um, uh, imbalance to be corrected not just for West Indies but for all the test playing nations and associate nations outside of the big three yeah um, I, I'm quite I found quite curious uh, David the narrative used in the stories um, previewing this um, changing over of the the um, head of the ICC following uh, Manohar's stepping down from the position because the ICC is saying that they will over the next week discuss the process the process to which uh, or, or the process which will guide this decision as if there isn't something standard to say you know there's a committee to decide or will the ICC membership have a, have a vote on this it, it's almost as if they are going to make uh, they are going to outline a process for which will what which will guide the, the selection of this new person and Colin Graves the Englishman so far and everything that I've read just keeps being mentioned as a leading candidate for the job yeah it's absolutely there's there does seem to be a lack of flat lack of transparency uh, in the process and I think perhaps a lot of English cricket fans will be asking themselves what uh, uh, Mr. Grave has done to, to really uh, deserve to be just sort of uh, 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 shooed in, if that's what's going to happen. Um, and uh, given the fact that his stewardship of, the, of English cricket has not been without controversy, um, he has alienated a lot of cricket fans uh, in the UK by his uh, uh, um, uh, proponent, promotion of uh, the new 100 ball competition. Uh, which was due to be introduced this year has had to be delayed uh, by a year um, and obviously is on record as uh, previously uh, being quite critical of, uh, of uh, West Indies cricket. You made that comment about um, uh, uh, West Indies uh, being mediocre, which was used to fire up uh, West Indies before that last, last tour. Um, so he hasn't been um, seen as a huge advocate of, uh, of the smaller nations. And so, yeah, it would be good to see greater transparency at a time when, you know, during the pandemic, uh, that all the world is looking at, uh, looking for perhaps fairer uh, distribution and equality of treatment of, of all sports playing countries. Mm. All right, David, as usual, great talking to you. And we will continue to be linking with you yeah. as we head into this test series between the West Indies and England. And uh, first of all, the build up. And then when the action starts, we'll be hearing your take mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Thanks for talking to us, Dave. Very welcome, Lance and Maria. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we heard um, you know, some really good insight there from our analyst there in England. He's in all the action and he'll be keeping us updated. As we go to the break, remember to catch Alex Jordan on the line with Barbadian 400 and 800 meter running star Jonathan Jones this evening at 6 p.m., 7 p.m. ECT on Sportsmax and 8 p.m. 9 ECT on Scene TV. In this episode, Jones takes us through some early stories as he displayed promise. As the guards predicted, I had a test, a workout test, and he said, this is when my personal best in the 800 was 152 the year before. And I had this test, and at the end he was like, the very first race you run, you will probably run between 150 and 149 like that and i was like that is a big jump especially at 800 and i believed him because if gar said it <laughs> it's so my first race around it like 149 like 149 88 and that's when i was like gar's knows what he is talking about